सो आई वी नॉट लाइव एज येट गाइज आई एम डॉक्टर सोनल परिहार वेटिंग फॉर दिस मोबाइल टू शो मी दर आई एम लाइव ओके येस सो आई एम लाइव डॉक्टर सोनल परिहार और अन अकेडमी टीचिंग यू ओ बी जी वाई हाउ आर यू चिल्ड्रेन गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन सॉरी फॉर बींग्स लिटिल लेट मॉर्निंग्स आर अ बिट हेस्टी एंड टेन फिफ्टीन पर स्टार्ट करना थोड़ा मुश्किल होता है सो नेक्स्ट टाइम प्रॉब्लम विल स्टार्ट एट टेन थर्टी ओके सो सो आई एम डॉक्टर सोनल परिहार आई एम अ कंसल्टेंट गायनेकोलॉजिस्ट इन जोधपुर राजस्थान एंड एम एन एंडोस्कोपिक सर्जन ट्रेन कॉलपोस्कोपिस्ट इन फर्टिलिटी एक्सपर्ट I have two YouTube channels. Ask your gynecologist is for the patients, and Doctor Sonal's tutorials is for the uh, students and the doctors. Okay, so that is the name of the channel, Doctor Sonal's tutorials. Sorry for not being able to write properly. Here. So that's Doctor Sonal's tutorials. Okay, so plus subscription, बच्चों जो आप लोगों का जिनका exam next year है, जिनको वापस appear करना है, it is a very beautiful subscription on Academy का. You get all the tutors. all the uh, uh, 19 tutors teaching you live teaching the, their recorded classes pdf notes everything is available including mcqs pyqs iconic is beautiful because it has prep ladder as well so if you want to learn from two apps prep ladder ka bhi sare tutors ka aapko milega an academy ka bhi pura milega an academy ke live lectures are very important because nobody goes live and nobody teaches you live on free platform on youtube and special classes jaise ki hum log padhate hain प्रेप लैडर में आपको इसके नोट्स मिल जाएंगे अन अकेडमी में भी आपको सब कुछ मिल जाएगा तो यू गेट टू एप्स टू स्टडी और इसका मिनिमम सब्सक्रिप्शन सिक्स मंथ्स है नीट लाइट इज फॉर बेसिकली ओनली एम इसमें भी आपको छः महीना एक साल तक के एम मिल सकते हैं ठीक है थीके? एक साल तक का एक्सेस मिल सकता है एम तो बहुत सारे मिलेंगे पच्चीस से ज़्यादा होंगे नाइनटीन सब्जेक्ट्स के होंगे पी वाई क्यूज़ होंगे तो यूल गेट सो मच इन अ वेरी लिटिल कॉस्ट लाइट का अगर आप देखें इट इज़ ओनली टू वन सिक्स जीरो बट अफकोर्स ये टेन परसेंट डिस्काउंट के बाद है और आपको पता है कि डिस्काउंट मिलता है कोड लगाने से एंड माई कोड इज डॉक्टर सोनल इन कैपिटल्स ठीक है डी आर एस ओ एन ए एल दैट इज अ कोड यूज दिस टू अवेल दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी यू कैन सी आइकॉनिक सिक्स मंथ से लेके फोर ईयर्स तक का है फोर ईयर्स इज फॉर द फर्स्ट ईयर एम बी बी एस जिनका कि चार साल बाद नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सिक्स होगा थ्री मंथ थ्री ईयर्स का उनके लिए है जो अभी सेकेंड ईयर में लाइक वाइज यू कैन परचेज है तो इसमें आपको डबल सब्सक्रिप्शन मिलेगा ऑफ टू एप्स और इसमें आपको प्लस में ओनली आन अकेडमी मिलेगा ठीक है then auto daily practice papers is for the plus classes my plus classes are starting from the 25th of may yani ki next week se start ho rahi hai 25 may se jisme ki hum log aapko upsc ke liye wo panchon subjects ka revision karane wale all the five tutors together okay then this is the fmge batch jo bachche fmge ke liye appear kar rahe hain is saal ya phir next year i don't know fmge do bar hota hai ki ek bar i think ek bar hi hota hai 4th june ko hai is bar so you can join this batch and you can get this opportunity to avail everything for one month agar aaj agar aap join karoge that is 7 17th of May तो आपको 17th of June तक ये पूरा मिलेगा बट ऑफकोर्स आपका एग्जाम तो फोर्थ जून को ही है तो वॉट एवर इफ यू थिंक कि आपको प्रीवियस कुछ देखना है भाई सब्सक्रिप्शन कोई बहुत महंगा नहीं है अगर आपको उसमें से आप 20 30 परसेंट भी पढ़ पाते हो वो टॉपिक्स जो आपके प्रिपेयर नहीं है तो आपके लिए तो जस्टिस सही है यू स्टिल हैव ट्वेंटी डेज टू गो फॉर द एग्जाम प्लस टेस्ट कैलेंडर ये वाला तो ओवर हो चुका है पूरा द डेट्स आर ओवर दिस इज स्टिल गोइंग ऑन एफ एम जी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री नेक्स्ट एंड इसके सब्जेक्ट वाइज टेस्ट ये सारे आप डेट्स देख सकते हैं दीज आर अवेलेबल दीज आर प्लस यानी कि पेड टेस्ट नीट पी जी के प्रीवियस फोर ईयर्स के क्वेश्चन पेपर्स यू कैन परचेज जस्ट कॉल ऑन द हेल्पलाइन नंबर एटी फाइव एटी फाइव एटी फाइव एटी फाइव एटी फाइव दैट इज द हेल्पलाइन नंबर कॉल दैम देन कमिंग टू प्रॉफ वन डॉक्टर सोनल का कोड लगाने से एनाटमी बायो कैम एंड फिजियोलॉजी का थ्री मंथ्स सिक्स मंथ्स एंड वन ईयर का सब्सक्रिप्शन अवेलेबल है सच लो कॉस्ट पे आपको आज अभी से आपके बेसिक्स क्लियर हो जाएंगे तो आपके जो जूनियर्स आप उनको बोल सकते हैं देन रिविजन बैच जैसे कि मैंने बताया यू पी एस सी दैट इज यूनियन पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन के पाँचों सब्जेक्ट्स हम लोग कवर करने वाले हैं ऑल दीज फाइव सब्जेक्ट्स विच आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन टू पेपर्स पेपर वन पेपर टू यू पी एस सी का एग्जाम फाइव हंड्रेड मार्क्स का होता है टू फिफ्टी फोर पेपर वन एंड टू फिफ्टी फोर पेपर टू इसकी ओरिएंटेशन क्लास मैं कर चुकी हूँ फोर्टीन को आई टोल्ड यू कि फोर्टीन मे को हमने पढ़ा था कि इसमें क्या क्या जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज होती हैं कितनी सीट्स हैं किस तरह से एग्जाम डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड है तो वी विल बी कमिंग आउट विद टू बैचेस डॉक्टर सोनल का कोड वापस से लगाना है वन मंथ एंड टू मंथ्स के बैचेस हैं आई वुड सजेस्ट जॉइन दिस बैच सो दैट टू मंथ्स का आपको एक्सेस मिलेगा क्योंकि एग्जाम सत्रह जुलाई को है अगर आप अभी से वन मंथ का खरीदोगे तो कोई मतलब नहीं जून के मिड में आपका खत्म हो जाएगा एक्सेस तो यू वॉन्ट एक्सेस टिल सेवनटीन ऑफ जुलाई आज सेवनटीन में है आज ही खरीद लो इसको दो महीने का पूरा एक्सेस मिल जाएगा एंड यू जस्ट हैव टू पे फोर फॉर फाइव सब्जेक्ट्स का फुल रिविजन फुल कोर्स थ्योरी एज वेल एज एम और क्या चाहिए एंड प्रीवियस
let's get this answer from you what is the dose of ulipristal acetate write the question number and then write your option a b c d what is the dose of ulipristal acetate they are not asking you uh, ki ye uh, emergency contraception mein kitni use uh, kitni dose hai ya fir fibroids mein kitni dose hai they are just asking you what is the dose of upa so whatever you think is the best answer you should give Okay, shall we have some answers? Anybody? We don't have many people watching right now, but I think you will join. They will join slowly. Aditya Pal, hello. So we have one answer. That is D. See, they are very confusing. They are all multiples of three, so you should know whether it's thirty or three hundred, and then you should know whether it's milligram or microgram. So, Aditya, I am not uh, agreeing with your answer. Let us try again. Let us try again. Anyone else? Okay, so Aditi, you have chosen the right multiple that is thirty, but it is not micro; it is milligram. So it is not three hundred; it is thirty milligram. Let's come to the answer. Ulipristal acetate (LA) is a progesterone agonist or antagonist marketed for emergency contraception. So they are only talking about emergency contraception. For fibroids, also it can be given ten milligram TDS or ten milligram OD. So since they have not given you ten milligram ka option, so you have to go with the emergency contraception dose. Okay, it is available by prescription only. Mechanism of action is. Uh, based on the time of administration if it is taken before ovulation it delays or inhibits ovulation because it is an um, anti progesterone administration in the early luteal phase may decrease the endometrial thickness and affect implantation depends upon when it is taken ulipristal is labeled for use as as an emergency contraception one tablet of 30 mg taken as soon as possible within 120 hours that is 5 days of upa so one tablet single tablet of 30 mg okay then coming to premature ejaculation is a part of which phase of sexual disorder excitement phase plateau phase orgasm phase or refractory phase so these are all neat pg questions i'm not sure i've never come across this kind of question in neat pg but uh, since they are asking you should be knowing about these phases because in even in your theory i never came across this kind of question just attempt it just try it's it's not that difficult Okay, no answers. Nobody knows the answer. Well, it is the orgasmic phase that is the answer. So premature ejaculation, obviously ejaculation will happen in the orgasm phase. Okay, so that is the orgasmic phase. Male sexual response is described in the sequence of phases. You should just go through the answer just in case they ask. Sexual desire, erosal, orgasm, and resolution. Okay. The male sexual dysfunction usually occurs in one or more of the three first stages of sexual response. That is. desire arousal and ejac uh, uh, isme orgasm in teen phases mein problem aata hai dysfunction of sexual desire is hypoactive sexual desire arousal is erectile dysfunction and orgasm is premature ejaculation retrograde ejaculation there is a retrograde okay or inability to ejaculate so it is a orgasmic phase premature ejaculation occurs due to the rapid evolution of the first two stages of the sexual response cycle and it is not necessarily related to strong sexual arousal or changes in erection okay premature ejaculation seems to be a neurobiological problem that is related to low serotonin levels in those regions of the cns that that regulate the ejaculation brain and the spinal cord okay 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सिक्सटी ईयर ओल्ड वुमन कम्स विथ थर्ड डिग्री यू ट्रेन ट्रोल एप्स वॉट विल बी द मैनेजमेंट सिक्सटी ईयर ओल्ड वुमन कमिंग विद थर्ड डिग्री यू ट्रेन ट्रोल एप्स वॉट विल यू डू यूल डू विजानल हिस्ट्रेक्ट मी विद पेल्विक फ्लोर रिपेयर यूल डू ओनली पेल्विक फ्लोर रिपेयर सेक्रो स्पाइनस फिक्सेशन और पेसरी very simple question they have not given you any uh, comorbidities yes so the answer is vaginal hysterectomy with pelvic floor repair and that is the answer okay because she is only 60 she is not above 80 that you will think about pessary and that too they haven't told you any comorbidities okay so you don't have to go for a conservative treatment so vaginal hysterectomy yes satya anandan aspirant aditya pal yes uterine prolapse surgery is performed to remove the uterus and repair the weak tissue uh should we go through this postmenopausal women who have had one or more vaginal delivery sagging of the pelvic muscles can lead to uterine prolapse if supportive tissues are damaged during pregnancy and delivery due to estrogen loss due to straining chronic cough constipation due to gravitational effects all these are causes of prolapse depending upon factors like age of woman desire for becoming pregnant and overall state of a woman's health here the woman is of old age non gestational they have third degree prolapse so best manager of choice is vh okay day 20 of the menstrual cycle falls under which phase very simple quick answer please menstrual phase follicular phase ovulation phase luteal phase day 20 what phase is it right so we have one answer we have two answers that is true that is luteal phase Entire duration is one to five is menstrual, one to thirteen is follicular, and day fourteen is ovulation. Okay, so it actually they have they have given follicular from day one. Okay, not from day five or day four because some women will menstruate for two days, some for four days, five days. So it's actually the first day one to day thirteen is follicular. Okay. Chromosome number of the partial H mole. We know this. Chromosome number. 46 xx 45 x0 46 xxy 69 xxx right you people are not writing the number of the question kindly write the number of the question because i can't actually understand because there is a lag youtube 10 20 15 15 seconds piche chalta hai so i don't understand which question you are answering but i'll take this answer as d because it is very simple that is 69 it is a triploidy 69 xxx so next time please write down the number of the question as well so 69 xxx triploid pregnancy with 69 instead of 46 another strange complication of reproductive process partial h mole can be identified by ultrasound showing placental tissue some hygromatous cysts some fetal oddities but no clear fetal structure ultrasound is strictly an indicator after spontaneous abortion or dilatation cure attach tissue needs to be examined by pathology so it is either 69 xxx or 69 xxy or 69 xyy okay depending upon because here the ovum is not uh, empty the ovum will give you one x so one x will always be there one um, uh, then the other sperm will either be xx it can be xy it can be yy depending upon how many sperms carrying which chromosome have uh, fertilized the egg okay vulval atrophy and itching are treated by question number 6 please question number 6 and then your option vulval atrophy and itching is treated by estrogen ointment antihistamines tamoxifen or none of these question number 6 6 6a 6a right so i'll go with this answer that is 6a estrogen that is true atrophic vaginitis the medical term for this condition occurs as a result of deterioration of the vaginal tissue because of low estrogen it is a common condition in postmenopausal women because as estrogen levels will drop the tissues that line the vagina become thinner and more easily damaged women with atrophic vaginitis may also experience vaginal itching burning frequent urination and vaginal discharge even without any infection they will have all these symptoms women can treat this condition topically with estrogen creams or even tablets vagifem which are vaginal tablets or estrogen releasing rings which are e string okay 
oral estrogen available by doctor's prescription it can restore the vaginal tissue but then oral estrogen will act systemically and we don't want the patient to end up in endometrial hyperplasia vaginal lubricants they offer an alternative for women wary of using estrogen women who are afraid of using estrogen you they can use simple non hormonal lubricants moisturizers like replens astroglide lubrin can also reduce the symptoms okay coming to question number 7 pgf2 alpha maximum dose in pph is how much how many uh, injections of pgf2 alpha we can give so one injection has how much and how many injections can you give question number 7 Okay. we have two answers and that is true it is 2 mg so what is the dose of pgf2 alpha single injection single injection is 0.25 mg okay so 0.25 mg multiplied by maximum doses we can give is eight doses okay so if you multiply them 8 into 0.25 is 2 mg okay so that is the dose maximum dose drug dose of management of pph you give 0.25 dose im you can sometimes even give it intrauterine at the sa node that is at is just at the cornual end that is the node the uh, dominance where the contractions are originating so you can give it intramyometrically every 15 minutes you give one injection so that means eight injections you can give total 2 mg precautions are asthma because it is a prostaglandin it can lead to bronchospasm okay Question number eight: Which of the following is false as physiological change in pregnancy? What is false? You have to tell the false statement. Increased cardiac output, increased total protein, increased residual volume, increased GFR. What do you mean by HR class, uh, Mulai? What is HR class? Can you please tell me? What do you mean by that? okay we have one answer good morning komal good morning geetika so we have late entries today 15 minutes are over then people are joining 8c is right it is not increased residual volume it is a decreased residual volume because of the diaphragmatic push up okay the respiratory rate is essentially unchanged but tidal volume and resting minute ventilation increase significantly as pregnancy advances the frc and the residual volume are decreased as a result of elevation of diaphragm okay then question number 9 you want a one hour class mulai uh, see i can do classes according to what an academy tells me so i am doing half an hour daily so you can just count it as one hour okay so even if you join late you can just see this session because it's a free session you can just see it one hour is not possible here i we get half an hour on youtube and we get 45 minutes maximum on special class okay in the plus class we get 2 hours so plus classes are paid classes we get 2 hours continuously so that is starting from the 25th of may so come on give me the answer over gestational diabetes is defined when the glucose is more than what they are actually asking about the uh, fasting blood glucose there is a misprint here fasting blood glucose more than how much then it is over gestational diabetes 9 okay so we have a a a actually the answer is b it is not a actually that's a b c and d it is b so the fasting blood sugar should not be more than 126 you all are writing 200 probably thinking that it is 1 rpp or 2 r postprandial it is actually 126 they are trying to ask you about the fasting 92 to 125 it is diagnosed as gdm but if it is more than 126 that is over diabetes uh mulai i will think about it maybe yes i can do it on my channel let's see okay magnesium sulfate have no role in the prevention of seizures in severe preeclampsia just counted as a b c and d some of the questions don't have this uh, notation magnesium sulfate has no role in prevention of seizures recurrent seizures rds and bradycardia so what is the right answer 9 it's 10 question 10 okay okay 
yes so that is true everybody knows the answer rds in premature baby indicated to prevent seizures associated with preeclampsia ie and even control of seizures magnesium sulfate is commonly used as anticonvulsant for toxemia as a tocolytic agent for premature labor during the last half of pregnancy toxicity of iv magnesium sulfate includes cardiac arrhythmias loss of we know all the reflexes knee reflexes muscular paralysis respiratory depression and cns depression in the mother as well as neonate so it cannot prevent respiratory distress syndrome that is rds okay green frothy vaginal discharge is produced by herpes candida trichomonas or normal vaginal flora tell me question number 11 okay so that is true 11c that is trichomonas vaginalis it is a sexually transmitted disease it is almost entirely a disease of child bearing age vaginal discharge is frothy slightly greenish color profuse multiple punctate strawberry cervix is very very uh, pathognomonic or you can say diagnostic of trichomonas so that is how it appears typical strawberry appearance on the vaginal vault even and even on the posterior vaginalis of the cervix diagnosis is culture is 98% reliable okay now question number 12 which of the following is an absolute contraindication to ocp use absolute contraindication to ocp use a b c and d question number 12 no gardnella is different mulai gardnella is bacterial vaginosis whenever there is a, a change in the ratio of dodaline bacilli which are lactobacilli whenever there is problem in the vaginal acidity these other bacteria mobilincus gardnella uh, or urea plasma urolyticum these are the uh, pathogens which will grow and the balance between lactobacilli and these bacteria will be altered after lactobacilli goes down and then these bacteria will grow this is not an infection this is just an alteration in the vaginal flora so gardnella is is a cause of uh, bacterial vaginosis trichomonas is a protozoa it is a protozoan which is a totally different organism question number 12 okay everybody knows it is dvt that is true others are all relative contraindications so they are generally accepted to be contraindicated in women with pre existing cardiovascular disease in women who have a familial tendency to form blood clots thrombosis women with severe obesity hypercholesterolemia and smokers over the age of 40 OCPs are also contraindicated for women with liver tumors, hepatic adenoma, severe cirrhosis, for those with known or suspected WHO cancer. In WHO categories, there are category A, B, C, and D given in your DC that are very clearly. Go through these categories; they are very important. Sometimes they ask you category A, category B, and you should know what all is there. Okay. Question number thirteen. Which of the following statement is correct about acute acute fatty liver of pregnancy? it occurs in 1 in 1000 mostly seen in last trimester common if female fetus is present may be associated with decreased uric acid so what is correct just one statement is correct question number 13 yes everybody is right so this incidence is wrong it is uh, more than that it is actually 1 in 10000 probably mostly seen in last trimester common in male fetuses and may be associated with increased uric acid not decreased okay so that is why it is question number uh, 13b it is 13 yes 13b and seen in may, obese women question number 14 female with 41 weeks of gestation confirmed by radiological investigation very sure of her lmp no uterine contraction so she is post dates one week post date everything is fine there is no effacement no dilatation what should not be done okay she has come to you she is post dates and her dates are confirmed nothing is a problem her baby is fine there is but she is not in labor what will you do but what will you not do okay something which should not be done you can induce her with intra cervical foleys or pg e1 tablet or pg e2 gel or pg f2 alpha what is wrong obviously you will induce her question number 
okay so you know what all are the procedures of induction we have studied this in the induction dinoproston that is pge1 tablets gels everything is available so e2 e1 all are available even intracervical foley's catheter is indicated it is pgf2 alpha which cannot be given as an induction thing because it is basically to reduce pph this is only for pph pgf2 alpha has no role in inducing a patient so that is pgf2 alpha okay that is the answer yes it's 14 d common double decidual sign is seen during first trimester second early second late or third trimester tell me question number 15 Mulay, you are answering question number fifteen. Okay. Okay. So that is true. It is first trimester. That is because of the decidua capsularis and decidua parietalis. We have read this before. The DDSS sign is a useful feature as early pregnancy ultrasound to confirm an early intrauterine pregnancy when the yolk sac or embryo is still not visualized. The double decidual sign first described by again the scientist the doctor's name if you can remember that is a double decidual sign it is eccentrically located in the uterus so it is not a central location it is kind of like this that is how you see early pregnancy it was postulated by Nyberg uh, consists of two ecogenic rings surrounding the surrounding the hypoechoic gestational sac the inner ring is the chorion embryonic disc and decidua capsularis outer ring is the decidua parietalis so this is something that you should know inner ring may chorion hai embryonic disc hai decidua capsularis hai outer ring may decidua parietalis hai okay next coming to question number 16 mtp according to fda misoprostol is given after how many hours of mifepristol what is the dose of these two drugs and what is the duration in between them the gap question number 16 hello jewish okay so first we give mifepristone 600 micrograms uh, of mifepristone and then after how many hours we give myzo and myzo we give four tablets that is 800 micrograms okay this is i think milligram i think this is milligram 600 milligram and this is 800 microgram four tablets of 200 so that is true it is 48 hours later so that is according to the fda okay fda approved protocol original protocol 600 mg yes 600 mg three tablets given orally we normally get 600 mg of a single tablet now mifepristone given orally on day 1 followed by after 48 hours you give oral myzo 400 um, it is microgram actually two tablets or we have in india we get 200 microgram ki four tablets you give four tablets okay treatment should be started no more than 48 days uh, 48 days from the start of the last menstrual period so 48 days if you divide by 7 that is 6 plus 6 weeks plus 6 days so not before 7 weeks you should finish it uh, but in our country we are giving it up even up till 9 weeks okay so mtop is recommended up till 9 weeks but practically I, even i don't give it up to 7 weeks 200 mg of mifepristone it is as effective as 600 mg of mifepristone is given orally on day 1 followed by 2 days later by vaginal mifepristone so this is another one either you give 200 followed by 800 vaginally or give 600 followed by um, 800 again orally this regimen provides highest efficacy within 63 days so there you go 63 days is 9 weeks okay so that is 63 days is 9 weeks so depending upon which protocol you are following in india what even i am following is 600 mg of myfo mifepristol followed by 800 microgram of myzo vaginally i don't give it orally okay because it can cause a lot of vomiting it's a high dose progesterone uh, prostaglandin telegram group uh, i'm just putting the link now because i i put it every time it is dr sonal parihar dr sonal parihar neat pg fmge so i'm just putting it now so that you can join it and i keep posting my lectures here so join it guys 
soon there will be a plus group made as well the a plus group in which i'll be posting pdfs from an academy because that is a paid group and that only the plus people can join okay first symptom in vulval cancer what is the first symptom in vulval cancer question number 17 pain pruritus ulcer or blood discharge okay komal we have one answer here so we are done with our 30 minutes and we need to finish now because we don't get more than 30 minutes here so yes that is true it is pruritus is the answer the first thing that you get in vulval cancer even in non cancerous cases anything in vulva any lesion will first cause pruritus later on the changes in the skin will appear women with uh, vulval cancer commonly present with pruritus and a visible lesion however pain bleeding and ulceration may also be initial complaints sometimes depending upon what kind of problem she is suffering from now last question which is increased in premature ovarian failure very simple serum uh, inhibin serum uh, progest uh, fsh serum estradiol or both a and b what is increased in premature ovarian failure last question rest we will do at 4:30 pm as usual every day we are doing two free classes special classes on an academy learners app at 4 pm 4:30 pm and 8 pm today two classes on mcqs only 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 mcqs on an academy learners app okay so just use my code dr sonal to unlock the class dr sonal i will put the link in the uh, telegram group an academy learners app download it from your mobile play store okay so it's not showing in the app what is not showing in the app you always join mulai i have seen you in my special classes okay 18b and that is true that is fsh is going to increase and the level should be more than 40 estrogen is decreased less than 20 inhibin b is decreased because that is what comes from the uh, granulosa cells but it is mainly fsh that we measure okay so all, see you all at 4:30 pm on the an academy learners app bye bye and take care.